All right, what we're going to do in this tutorial today is practice writing linear equations in slope intercept form, also known as y equals mx plus b. And we're going to write an equation that represents these four lines shown on the graph. So before we start, what I recommend is pushing pause on the video and see if you can write the equations on your own and then go ahead and check your answer or maybe look at one example and see if you can do the other ones and then resume the video to see if you got the equations correct. All right, so we can really choose any of these to start. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this line here on the top, this purple line. So what I'm going to do first is write out our equation, y equals mx plus b. And the first thing that I'm going to do is identify what the slope of our line is. Now, as you can see on our graph, they already have some points plotted for us. And to find the slope of any line, you just need two points that are located on that line. So I'm just going to use this point here and this point here. Now we can see that we would have to go this distance in the y direction. And we started at 2000 and ended up at 2200. So that is an increase of $200. And then we have to go over from here to here to get to our second point. And we started on the x-axis at 10, and we ended up at 18. So that is a distance of 8. So what we have to do now is take that rise over run, or change in y of 200, over the change in x of 8, and we have to simplify that. So what we're going to do is take 200 and divide that by 8, and that ends up giving us 25. So the slope of this purple line is 25, so let's go ahead and substitute m, or the slope, with 25. All right, now what we have to do is figure out what our y-intercept is. That's what b is equal to in this equation. Where does our line cross or intersect our y-axis? Now, we can't tell by looking at it. it. We can see that it is a bit below 1,800. It's not in the middle of 1800 and 1600, which would be 1700. It looks like maybe it's 1750 or something like that, maybe 1775. But you just can't guess. What you have to do is get that exact location. So here's what we're going to do in this case. We're going to leave B alone for now because we don't know what it is. And we are going to choose one point on this line and substitute the x and the y value of that point into the x and the y variables of our equation. So let's go ahead and just select this point right here, which we can see has an x value of 2 and a y value of 1,800. So we swap out y with 1,800 and set it equal to 25 times whatever the x is. In this case, this point here is at 2. And now we can solve for b. So now we have 1,800 equal to 25 times 2, which is 50. And at this point, we can just do a little bit of mental math. So I can just subtract 50 from 1,800, which would give us 1,750. Because if I took 1,750 and added it to 50, that would be 1,800. However, your teachers might say that you have to show your work. So in that case, you would just take this 50. And you would write the inverse of it, minus 50. And you would do the same thing on the other side. So on the left-hand side, we have 1,750. And on the right-hand side, we have b. And that is what b is equal to. So what we can do is we can go ahead and we can swap b out with 1,750. So this is the equation in slope-intercept form that represents that purple line. All right, let's go ahead and find the equation for this orange line here. Now, one thing that you may have noticed right away is that all four lines are parallel to each other. And any lines that are parallel to each other will always have the same slope. So that's going to make our work a lot easier. We know that the slope of this line is going to be 25, as will be for this line and for this line. So let's go ahead and do this. We're going to start with y equals, and straight away we're going to plug 25 in for slope x. And for the y-intercept this time, 
it's going to be really easy because we can clearly see that it is intersecting the y-axis exactly at 1,200. So we just write 1,200 at the end of our equation, and that is it. We already have our equation. So on to the green line right here. So once again, we can see that the slope is the same as the others, so that is going to be 25x, and this green line crosses the y-axis exactly at 600. So we just write 600 at the end. And now for the red line. So we start with y equals 25x. Now this time we cannot look and see exactly where this line is crossing the y-axis. So we have to do a little bit of algebra and solve for b in this case. So what we're going to do is substitute in one point for the x in the y. So let's just go ahead and select this point right here, which is located at 2, 400. So what we're going to do is we are going to plug 2 in for our x value. So we have to do 25 times 2 and substitute our y value with 400. And then we have to solve for b. So if we simplify this equation a bit more, we get 400 equals 50 plus b. Now at this point, I can just look and see that the only thing you can add to 50 to make 400 would be 350. So I know that b is going to be equal to 350. So what I'm going to do is I am going to take the variable b and substitute it with 350. Now we have the equation that represents the relationship between the x and the y variable for that line. Now that we have all four of our equations, what you can do for each one of those is you can plug any x value into the equation, also known as your input, and solve everything on the right hand side, and the answer will be equal to y, which is your output. So if I were to take this point, for example, on the purple line, we can see that its x value is 26 and its y value is 2400. So what we could do is if we were to plug 26 in for x and multiply 26 times 25 and then add 1750, we would get a result of 2400. So after you have an equation for your line, you can plug in any x value to get its corresponding y value, and you wouldn't even have to look at the graph to see where that point is located. Hey, I just want to say thanks for checking out this math tutorial. Please don't forget to hit that subscription button and activate notifications so you can be informed as I upload new math tutorials that just might help you with your math homework. Until next time, this is Shane Masonette with Masonette Math.